Now it's no lie that Sonic is back on his feet. After almost a decade of continuous L, Sonic is shining in the eyes of both fans and the general public. And now with new media being produced left, right and center, but the work isn't done. Sonic as a franchise is still being held back and today, we're gonna discuss how exactly we can fix this issue and get our favorite blue rat back in the prime time. Now, if you as a member of the general public haven't heard of the IDW comics, you would have least heard of the Sonic movie duology. These things have done so much heavy lifting for the Sonic franchise as of late. Shout out Jeff Fowler and Tyson Hess, these legends have just been doing this, they've been making sure the films are enjoyable and memorable experiences. And trust me, they needed to put in the work after that first design, but yeah, after that got fixed, it was smooth sailing for the movies from there. And as expected for a major motion picture, everyone and their brother is at least gone to see it or heard of the movie. That in turn equals more exposure for Sonic, yet we haven't seen much gameplay of the newest big release that's dropping this year. Oh sorry, did I say much gameplay? <laughs> I meant any gameplay. And that leads me to one of the many ways that Sega is fumbling the bag with their main mascot. These terrible decisions are holding Sonic back. They range from minor to devastating and we're gonna go through each and every one of them right now. Alright, the first thing that must be discussed is the use of the Nuvo DRM, aka anti-tamper software that comes bundled with the games. I touched on this in my previous video, link to that will be in the top right corner of the screen, but essentially it's extra software packaged with the games that prevents people from modding or illegally copying their games. Which sounds good on paper, right? Yeah, until the games experience extreme slowdowns and frame rate drops ruining the experience for the average consumer. Doesn't sound so ideal anymore, does it? Ever since Sonic Mania, which had the worst of this problem until it got patched and it still had issues then, Sega has been slapping this DRM in every game. I'm talking Sonic Forces, Team Offline Racing, Sonic Colors Ultimate, and now Sonic Origins. And so far, each and every one of these games suffer from some form of performance issue. Yet Sega keeps adding it on. Mania eventually had it removed, yeah, it was that bad. And to this day, Sonic Colors Ultimate still runs terribly on the beef of PCs bro and now they're putting this nonsense in Origins as well. There has to be another way because why keep using this particular DRM which still gets cracked in the end at the expense of people who legitimately purchase your game while pirates are technically getting a better experience. More time I believe they're gonna slap this shit into Sonic Frontiers and let's just say if a port of a 12 year old Wii game runs like dog shit on modern consoles, this open world experience that they're trying to sell us, it's not gonna work G. It's gonna run at like 5 frames per second. They need to fix this Sega, you need to get on this. Alright secondly, I'm gonna address the elephant in the room. The latest Sonic release that we've waited for. 5 years, 5 long years since Forces is dropping this year, holiday 2022 and we haven't seen a lick of gameplay, not a single crumb I tell you. And before the Sega Defense Squad pull up to my comment section, even Forces showed gameplay in the trailer. That's right, Forces, as mid as it was, had the balls to show off what it had to offer. Meanwhile, we've got some moving landscape and just Sonic standing there. During the Sonic Central that might have been enough for us starving Sonic fans, but it has been several months, several months, and we haven't seen hide nor hair of Frontiers ever since. In fact, I was watching a video the other day and this guy just summarized it in the best way possible. Sega has been known to have a very segregated marketing schedule, which usually means that if Origins is the thing coming out next, to them Frontiers basically doesn't exist. If they were a mother with two children, they basically had one hand, essentially. One child have to sit on the floor. <laughs> That's basically what's happening right now, Frontiers on the floor. What even is this marketing, bro? We get one teaser, a reveal trailer, and then zilch. If they want to keep up the hype for this game, they should be dropping a little something every like two months or just a bit of clarity, a little peek, 
to let the consumer know that the game's gonna be good, you know, for the people who plan to buy this game, <laughs> at least let them know it's gonna be worth the money, especially as this is rumored to be the most expensive Sonic game to date. That shit could give me the reverse Gok Gok 3000 for all I care, but until I see the gameplay footage, how am I supposed to know whether it's gonna be good or not? Okay, so apparently Jeff Keighley just made an announcement and basically there's going to be Sonic Frontiers gameplay shown in June. It's literally got announced after I finished writing and recording for this video, can you believe it? But again, this wasn't from an official source. We got it through Jeff Keighley, just like the first time when we saw Southern Frontiers. Ah! All right, for argument's sake, let's say the development isn't at a stage that's ready to showcase the gameplay. If so, why show us this now? Why not still keep that shit under wraps and reveal everything when it's ready? We don't even have a clear release date and what's to stop them from delaying this thing until next year? How are we supposed to know? This is why we just need a bit more transparency like even Breath of the Wild 2 which has been delayed to next year has been keeping fans in the loop on what exactly is going on and when it's dropping. Alright, next thing is a relatively new occurrence but this needs to be addressed as well. Some of these games have become incredibly overpriced in third world countries, even costing as much as a minimum wage. And this kinda gets me in a bad mood because to be honest you should be able to afford and play Sonic wherever you live on this planet. We should all be able to experience the mid together. Brazilian Sonic fans matter just as much as American and European ones. Apparently this might be a conversion error and not intentional, at least it better not be, so I'm hoping this gets fixed. But so far Sega hasn't said a single word on this issue, especially when you combine this with the fact that Sega are planning to delist all the existing ports of the Genesis games that are going to be in Sonic Origins. I might make a separate video on that. But yeah, once all these games are gone, People who live in areas affected by the price spike will be forced to buy Origins if they want to experience the classic games, which again, high price range. And realistically speaking, that's just not worth it. And that's when people resort to piracy. Not out of choice, but because of the hand they've been dealt. And last but not least, the Sega mandates. I mean, these really speak for themselves. What the actual fantastic fuck were Sega smoking when writing these? I know there are many guidelines for the IDW comics, but some of this stuff is low key mirrored in the games. Why can only male hedgehogs turn super? Why does Shadow have to be a B Tech Vegeta? My guy, if you're gonna copy from Dragon Ball, at least do it right. The female Saiyans can turn super. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, it may be some tingly back bullshit, but. They can still send super, why can't we get super Amy you cowards? Also does this mean all the times uh, Tails, uh, Knuckles, uh, Mighty Ray turned super in the Genesis games and Mania? Are those not canon anymore? Because those are the games that technically started all this, you know? You can't have the Sonic franchise without Sonic 1, Sonic 2, Sonic 3. The original games that started this all, you're saying they're not canon now? Money doesn't exist? Not even rings? Okay, what about Sonic 06? or Sonic Unleashed or Sonic Rush Adventure and there's probably more that I don't remember but yeah point still stands and I'm not gonna go through every single mandate but there's one that really pisses me off why is Team Dark apparently not a thing and Shadow doesn't even consider them friends anymore what what universe does this make sense in look how close they are in Sonic Heroes and in all the damn artwork that you guys release on the Sonic channel you're saying that they're not uh, don't get me started man why would they even be racing together in Team Sonic Racing then if they're not friends? Like, what? what, what? <laughs> but yeah, those are just some of the key things that needs to be fixed with the Sonic franchise. Maybe if this video gets enough views, someone important might see it. Eh? I don't know, man. I just felt I needed to upload. This was the first thing that came to my mind. Like, yeah. Don't judge me. Anyway, bye.